All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Appreciate you joining us on Facebook via the Internet. We appreciate you all being with us. And uh, I'd just like to say first thing this morning, God bless America. And uh, let's keep the faith. Believe that uh, this is just a temporary situation, which we know that it is. Everybody use wisdom. But most importantly, use your faith. Praise the Lord. So God bless all of you for being with us. Thank you for supporting the church. And we want you to know that we continue to pray. If you have uh, prayer requests or specific needs, if you'd let us know via the Internet, we'll be happy to pray with you about it and uh, believe God with you for whatever the need might be. God is more than able in every situation. Praise the Lord. So welcome again. Appreciate you being with us. And uh, be patient. We'll get this all worked out eventually. But in the meantime, uh, just be nice. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to talk to you briefly this morning. Uh, my whole idea has been about food. I've been thinking about food all week. For some reason, I've been extremely hungry. And uh, so the theme for this morning will be food. Praise the Lord. You're excited about that? I can tell already. Uh, why are pickles so calm? Because whatever happens, they deal with it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, even when there's nobody here, there's no difference because uh, the response is quite similar. Uh, what kind of bagel can fly? A plain bagel. Come on, a plain bagel. Okay, for uh, you people that are into ethnic foods, how about uh, what did one sushi roll say to another? I'm soy into you. <laughs> I'm turned on, but it's not, it's not lighting up. So. Why are pastries so stupid? They do not know anything. Praise the Lord. Okay. Why are Italian desserts so loyal? Obviously no answer. They can only be happy with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Cannoli. Are we all right, Mike, with just this, Mike? Because this one is not lighting up. So, praise the Lord. God bless all of you again for being with us. And uh, I just want to uh, talk to you this morning about a few things that I think are so pertinent to what, where we're at uh, in the world today. And I, first of all, I just say that we, we should be a calming influence. Amen. We shouldn't be feeding the fire of fear and anxiety and stress. We need to be uh, intelligent and uh, use some wisdom in the way that we operate, uh, at least in the immediate future. And that goes without saying. I think all of us realize that that needs to be done. But we also should be speaking calm and peace and confidence to people rather than uh, jumping on the bandwagon with a lot of the news agencies that just seem to want to get us all paranoid and freaked out completely. Amen. So uh, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. So therefore, we realize fear is a spirit. It's not just a feeling you get, but it's actually a spirit. And we release that when, we're, when we are uh, perpetuating this idea of fear and, and anxiety and, and uh, what we are afraid might happen. And if you know, if you've lived any length of time, you know that 90% of the things you've worried about never happened anyway. And so it was a waste of time and, and energy and emotion. So. We want to fear not. The Bible says over and over. In fact, it's recorded 365 times to let us know that every day we are to not be in fear. Because the spirit that God has given us is one of peace, of love, of sound minds, amen, patience. And so if we operate from the spirit that we are of and not the spirit that tries to uh, dominate our lives, which is a spirit of fear, we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through all of this, amen. And so let me begin this morning with uh, second. Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. We'll just have a couple of scriptures here to begin with and then we'll move on into the into the message today. God bless you. Hope you were uh, worshiping uh, prior to the uh, beginning of the message. Uh, since we don't have people here to worship, we I was here early praying and worshiping the Lord and I know Suzanne and Mike have as well. And we hope that you're doing that in your homes or wherever you're uh, viewing this at to kind of set yourself up for what God wants to do. We need to get into a spiritual frame of mind in order to really receive from God. So that's my hope, and uh, that's what we're going to be intending to do. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. 
Amen. Now Galatians chapter 5 and verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Praise God. Now, let me, for clarification uh, purposes, let me just say we have to recognize that there is a battle going on. And if anybody didn't know that, you're in a cave somewhere. But walking in the Spirit is both a spiritual battle, and in a sense, it's a physical battle as well. Our flesh, amen, or sense realm, wants to dominate us praise the lord and although jesus perfectly uh redeemed us and and uh brought us into the spirit realm with his blood there's still a battle that has to be fought and as we appropriate our redemption or our inheritance amen it has to be by faith and that's what we're all confronted with every day of our lives but especially today amen in the, in the world that we're living in amen and so we do it in our physical lives. There, are, there is an inheritance that has been given by the Spirit. Amen. And we are spiritual beings. But the truth is we have to appropriate it into our physical lives. There has to be a way for that to manifest then into our natural life or into our physical life. Amen. The Scripture says He sent His Word and healed us and delivered us from destruction. He didn't send a... You know, a wave or a feeling or a vibration, amen, or a goosebump. He sent his word and healed us and delivered us from destruction, amen. So let's look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. Praise the Lord. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Amen. So Paul talks about this internal battle multiple times throughout his writings. In fact, in, in Romans chapter 7, he does it again, Romans 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So Paul talks a lot about our minds and the things that we think about, the things that dominate our thoughts, amen? In fact, a common th uh, theme throughout Paul's writings is to renew our minds to the things of God, amen? Because we're totally tapped into everything that's natural, that's normal, that's human, amen? And Paul constantly reminds us that we need to be renewing our minds to the things of God, to who we truly are, to our true nature, amen, as spirits, amen. So look at, again, let's look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Praise God. And so then, then in Romans chapter 12, 12, or 12, 2, Paul exhorts us, he encourages us to transform our minds from following sense knowledge to the way of the Spirit or the Word of God. Amen? This is, this is so, uh, so right now. I mean, it should be the way we've lived all of our lives uh, as Christians. But the truth is now we're in a position where we're going to have to make a choice. Either we're going to operate by the Spirit or we're going to be dominated by the flesh. And I don't think any of us want that, especially when we know we have options here. There's other, th other ways of living that under ideal conditions, especially here in the United States, you can get away with just kind of fumbling through because there's a lot of good things available. But now we're put in a position where we're going to have to depend more on God than we ever have before. And He wants us to. He has all this available to us. He's just asking us to believe him for it. Amen. And so another reason why we don't want to get into fear, because fear 
contradicts faith. It gets in the way of faith. It, it causes us to doubt what God can do or what God has done, amen, for us. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this in 2 Corinthians now, chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Let's drop down to verse 21 now. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So here's the deal. God has already recreated you in true righteousness. Amen? True holiness. That's how you are. That's, that's your reality as far as God is concerned. As far as this spirit realm is concerned, that's your truth. That's the truth. The real you already exists even if you may not outwardly see it or experience it on a regular basis. It's, it's a fact. You are a new creature in Christ if you've been born again. And that's why Paul says in, in Colossians 3 and 2, we have to stop focusing on our outward circumstances. By faith, we need to focus on that which is not seen rather than that which is seen. And that's so that the unseen promise, amen, of the Spirit will begin to manifest in our lives, in our natural lives, in our seen lives, amen? So the real you, the healed you, the prospered you, amen, the holy you, the righteous you is a reality. It's a fact. It's a done deal. So, the deal we have to deal with is we have to put off the old man and put on the new man. We have to change the way that we think about this so we're not dominated by something old whom God says doesn't really even exist anymore except in our own minds. Amen? So we put on the new. And how do we do it? We do it by the Spirit. We do it by faith in what God has told us. Amen? So our minds have to be renewed in order to agree with the Spirit. Amen? And through revelation of God's Word is how we do it. Amen? This word is spirit and it's truth. Amen? And so we, we, our minds then have to be renewed to agree with this or with our spirit. Because our spirit already agrees with this. It's our mind that wants to argue about it. It's our mind that wants to say, yeah, but why didn't this happen? Or why did this happen? Or what? Just that's the problem is our minds haven't been renewed. And so we start talking stuff that isn't in agreement with God's word. And the problem is you're going to get what you're saying. Amen? Let's look at this quickly in John chapter 8. Uh, verses 31 and 32. John 8, 31 and 32. Uh, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. That's the key here. They, they were believers. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So how do we know what? How do we know the truth that will make us free? By, be, by continuing in his word, by keeping that always before us, amen, and having that be the dominant thought or the prevailing thought, regardless of what the natural conditions and situations might be, amen. So I want to highlight here this morning three revelations of truth that will help to empower us, amen, to walk in the spirit or, or walk by faith, which are one and the same, amen. And the first revelation of truth is in Romans 8 and 9. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 and 9 will be the first revelation of these three truths I want to talk to you about briefly this morning. You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, he says. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so here's the deal. That's powerful to me. That, that's a mind-blowing scripture if you really stop and think about it. Amen. Listen to what Paul's saying. He's saying, you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. That's how God sees you. He says, you're not in the flesh. You may have flesh, but you're not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, amen, if you're in Christ. So it may seem like you're in the flesh based on the circumstances, your feelings, your emotions, the, the kind of stuff that's being thrown at you in the natural world, amen. It, if you're focusing on your your outward circumstances, amen, and senses, you know, the feelings, the thoughts, the smells, the odors, the touching, and the whole thing. But according to Paul, if you belong to Christ, you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. 
Now you say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having all these... That's because you're focused on the flesh, but Paul says that's not your true identity. You are truly in the Spirit. You are truly a spirit being, and that's how God views you. That's how you should view yourself in order to attract the inheritance that God has for you. Amen? Romans 8 and verse 5. You're not in the flesh. If you're a believer, you are in the Spirit. Amen? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So we've got to ask ourselves, what are we setting our minds on? Amen? What do we focus our thoughts on? Now, I'll just throw this out. This is just me, okay? So you can do what you want to do. But I'm saying, I, I think we need the updates. We need to know what's going on with this thing and where we're at and what's going to take place next and what the restrictions are and all those kinds of things. That's just common sense. But once a day ought to be enough of that. I mean, you ought to get one, you, one update enough, ought to be enough for you. Instead of sitting there and sucking in all of this negative fear and anxiety and, and doubt and unbelief, let's get your update, go by that, but go back to the Word of God and say, hey, I'm not subject to this. I'm just going to be careful so that the people who are subject to it, I'm not going to be infecting them somehow. Right? I mean, I want to be careful to, to do the things that are being required. Obviously, that's why we're not holding church services here in a one-on-one in -on -one, uh, type of situation. But we've got to stop allowing this bombardment of fear and anxiety. Yes, we need to know what to do and how to do it to go along with the requirements that are being laid out there. That's just common sense. But you don't have to live on this thing and, and feed on it day in and day out. It's going to go on for a little while. I mean, how long do you want to be? I mean, I'm, I, 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 I might read an obituary here and there, you know, over time. I'm not talking about this specific moment. But I don't spend a lot of time in the obituary section of the newspaper, you know. I'm reading the funnies. I'm reading the good stuff, too. There's a lot of things there besides just the negative. And so that's what we need to be focusing on as far as God is concerned in, in this immediate time. But truly, all the time, in any situation. Amen. So are we focusing on the seen realm of the flesh or on the unseen realm of the spirit? Because that's going to determine a lot of what's going on in our lives. If the only thing you set your sights on are the things which are seen, and you fill your mind with the things which are seen, then that which is seen will be what's manifested in your life. Whoa! Somebody say, tap the brakes, man. I mean, that's what we've got to realize. This isn't a gimmick. This isn't some trick thing to do. This is the Word of God. This is what God tells us. Why? Because He knows there's going to be tribulations in people's lives. He knows there will be sickness. There will be accidents. There will be unusual circumstances and situations because this world has fallen. But He said, don't put your sight, don't make that the focus. Amen. Make your focus what God has said about that situation because that's the only thing that's going to change it. Amen. Feeling bad, being depressed, being bummed out, being scared is not going to change anything in terms of progressing uh, to, the, to the place where we want to be. Healed and delivered and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. So let's look again. 2 Corinthians now, chapter 4 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I know this looks like crap right now, but the truth is it's temporary. However long that temporary is, I don't know, but it's temporary, but God is eternal. His word is eternal. It does not change. Temporary things by definition tell you they're going to change. They'll get better. They'll get worse. They'll go away. They won't exist anymore, but the word of God is settled forever. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. It's a fact. It's a, it just never changes. It'll be the same no matter whether we've got a coronavirus, whether we've got the Asian flu, whether we've got some other situation, a war, whatever it could be. Amen. The Word of God will still prevail if we will use it. Praise God. Amen. And again, in Romans 8 and 9, we have the unseen promise of God. You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. Amen. In other words, if you're born again, then in the spirit realm, you are no longer in the flesh. Or in other words, in God's eyes, amen, you're no longer in the flesh. Even though in the physical realm, you may be responding to flesh situations and circumstances. Amen. I'll just tell you, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, uh, the grandkids had been over earlier and in the week, 
and they left their scooters and little weird riding things that they have, and, and uh, we kept them there at the house, and then Al Sally decided, well, we better take them back because they're not in school, they're gonna need something to play on outside and so forth. So we loaded them up, and while we were trying to load them, rather than put them in my pickup, of course, this was logical, we tried to stuff them into her car. That's brilliant, but that's what we did. And so I ended up having to put the one thing that has separate little foot deals on it, wiggles all over the place, into the back seat because it wouldn't fit in the trunk. And doing it, I had to contort myself and everything else. Well, the rest of the day, I had this pain just on one side in my back. And I mean, the devil, look, I don't know about anybody else, but the devil comes to me and he says, oh my God, your kidneys are failing. I think that's a liver thing. I think you know, your liver's about to explode or something, you know? I mean, all these thoughts are going through my mind. Seriously. And I just, so I just finally got so tired of thinking about it and, and letting it deal with me. I just said, devil, you are a liar. What is this about? I mean, I just moved a tricycle thing, you know, and, and you're trying to turn this into some, you know, crisis for me. Like all of a sudden now, I mean, I'm, this could be terminal. I mean, I moved a toy for crying out loud. You know, but you know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that can happen. I'm, and uh, hey, you know, I, and I know better, but you can't stop the birds, you know, they used to say flying through your, over your head, but you don't have to let them make nests in your head. So ideas will come, thoughts will come, that's what the enemy does, but it's how we deal with those thoughts. And finally, I got smart enough to realize maybe you ought to practice what you preach and just told the devil to shut the hell up. Amen. And just went on. I got up this morning, I don't have a pain anywhere. It's just, it was a temporary thing that the devil was trying to get me to make permanent. Yeah. Amen. And that's what this whole situation is about in terms of the virus or whatever confrontational things we face in the flesh. He's trying to make, he's trying to convince us that this is our reality. This is our only choice. This is the only thing we have is just, you got to suffer with this and hope that it isn't you that gets it and blah, 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 blah. No, we have a more sure word of promise. Amen. We have something far greater than any diagnosis a doctor can give or any fear that uh, a plague might come near us. Amen. We have a word that says... No plague comes nigh my dwelling. Amen. I'm not having it. I'm not having this stuff in my family. I'm not having it on me. Amen. I'm going to abide by the rules and the regulations that the government sets up. That's what we're supposed to do as, as children of God as well. But I'm not going to let that fear dominate my life. I'm going to set my confidence in the word of God, and I'm going to be blessed. And that's what I want for the church family. That's why we're talking about the things we talk about. If you know and have been a part of this church for any length of time, you know, this, this, is, this isn't something we just started preaching because there's a virus. This is something we have believed for years. But now it's becoming critical. It's no longer a, I'll take that or I don't take that. Now you better be taking it and utilizing it for your benefit because that's what God has given you. This is part of your inheritance as a believer, praise the Lord. So the truth of God's word is you're no longer in the flesh, but you're in the spirit because you have received the spirit of Christ. Amen. So then the battle then lies in convincing your body, convincing your mind, convincing your senses that you are no longer ruled by the flesh. That you come into agreement with what God says about you. You are a spirit first and foremost. You just happen to live in a body. But your, 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 your truth is you are a spirit. Praise the Lord. And so the way to do this, the way to, to, to operate this, is laying hold of the unseen. The not yet manifested. This is what the scripture is teaching us. We just read it a few moments ago. The promise of the spirit or the word of God, which are one and the same, by faith. And then that causes the unseen to manifest in the seen realm. That's how it works. You believe what God has said, the unseen manifestation above the seen manifestation. And that is what causes the unseen to manifest and drive the scene out. Am I, making, I hope I'm making sense to you. Praise the Lord. You can go back and check these scriptures, but this is the way it has to operate. This causes, this is what causes the unseen to manifest. Is faith. Is declaring what God has said in spite of what the natural senses might be telling you. Amen. It's by faith that we cause the promise of the Holy Spirit to physically manifest in our lives. Amen. Hebrews, look at this quickly. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. This goes all the way back to the foundation of the world. I mean, God spoke and it, and it came to pass. Now, in Hebrews 11, if you're familiar with this chapter, it's all about people who have operated by faith. Their circumstances 
totally dictated that they could not have what God promised them. Amen. Whether it was a child, whether it was uh, deliverance from enemies, whether, whatever it might have been. It happens the same way for everybody. The same way God does it. You believe the word. Amen. And that will become what manifests in your life. Amen. So by faith is the substance. Now, excuse me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. So my faith in this word, he says, faith is a substance of things hoped for. Now, obviously, we're hoping that no plague comes nigh my dwelling, that we don't get the virus, that we don't get sick, that we don't die, that we don't give it to somebody else, all those kind of stuff that's out there. But faith is a substance of things hoped for. So faith, I have faith for that, amen, because that's what I'm hoping for. The evidence of things not seen. My faith is evidence of things that exist that I don't see right now in the natural realm, right? For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. How? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, if you believe that God created this world, then there should be no doubt in your mind that God can heal you, that God can deliver you. Because he, used, he uses the same process of healing you or delivering you or protecting you or providing for you is exactly the same as how he created everything. Yeah. Now, we are his offspring. So we should function the way he functions, right? God, spirits, give birth to spirits, right? Dogs give birth to dogs. I talked here a while back about convincing a dog that he's a cat. Well, that's what the devil basically does with us. He tries to convince us we're just flesh. Amen. But we're not satisfied with just the flesh because it's not normal. It's not comfortable for us. Amen. Because we're truly a spirit. That has to be our focus. Praise the Lord. So in other words, it's by faith that we receive the things that exist in the spirit realm or the unseen realm. Amen. And we cause them to manifest in the physical realm of the spirit or of, of the seen realm, I should say. How do we do it? By faith. By believing what God said, even though we don't see it yet, over what we are seeing. Praise the Lord. Sounds difficult. But it's just believing God above this. Believing. I mean, how many people have you know, been born again and then their lives... They're, they're still chaotic. They're still screwed up. They're still making mistakes. They're still having issues. They're still having problems. They're still doing and having things that they shouldn't be having. Why? Because they, they don't feel born again. This isn't about feeling. This is about believing. God never said, I'm going to send you a feeling. No, he said, I'm going to send my word and it will heal you and deliver you from destruction. Just the word. You don't need to feel it. Feelings are something that are dominating the flesh part of us. Just like I talked about my back yesterday. Well, that, that feeling is what was trying to dominate my thinking. But once I shifted my thoughts from that feeling to what God said, the feeling disappeared. It was, it was temporary. It was false. It wasn't truly who I am or what I am. Amen? And so as you set your eyes above where Christ is seated, He's resting. His work is finished. So focus on that finished work. Amen? The reality of truth is the word of God that says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's the reality that we have to continue to go back to. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. That's your true identity. Amen. And I'm declaring today, praise the Lord, you are not in the flesh. I'm talking to everybody a part of this service, everybody a part of this church. Amen. You are not in the flesh because the word of God says if you are in Christ, you are in the spirit. Praise the Lord. And it's by faith that we see the spirit manifesting in our lives. Praise God. Amen. Now, you can receive it or you can reject it. But I'm declaring for me and the people who want to be a part of what we're trying to accomplish here. We're not in the flesh. We have flesh, but we're not in the flesh. We are in the spirit. If we are believers in Christ, if we've been born again, we're believers. We are in Christ. We are spirit beings. Amen. So let's look at this quickly. Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14. <clears throat> Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit 
through faith. Praise the Lord. So the first revelation, amen, we need to understand is Romans 8 and 9. You are not in the flesh if you're a believer. You're in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Okay, so now let's go to Romans 8, uh, verses 14 and 15. Because that's going to bring us to the second revelation of truth I want to share with you this morning. Romans 8, 14 and 15. So the first revelation is you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. That's revelation number one. If you're a believer, you're, not, you're no longer in the flesh. Amen. You have the flesh, but you're not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now this is fascinating to me. That brings us here. This is the second revelation of truth I want to talk to you about. And, and we need it to renew our minds with. And so, and here, here, what it is, is that we've been adopted as sons and daughters of God. He uses sons generically, but it's, he, it's, it's a non-gender specific. So we have become sons of God. Amen. We cry out, Abba, Father. Look at verse 15. You've not received the spirit of bondage. Again, if you're, you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we, we, that's you and me, we cry, Daddy. Yes. Daddy God. Father God. Amen. Right? Praise the Lord. Now, notice in this scripture, it's you and me again. We are the ones crying out, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Now, look at Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6. So you and I are crying out, Abba. Father, right? Here in Galatians 4, 6, he says, Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. So now in this scripture, it's the Holy Spirit within us that cries out, Abba, Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. In, in Romans 8, it was us. We are the ones crying out, Abba, Father. Then in Galatians chapter 4, now... It is the spirit within us that is crying out, Abba, Father. Now, here's the point. Christ's spirit and our spirit have been perfectly united. Praise the Lord. And they are crying out together in perfect harmony, Daddy, Father, that we're in agreement. Just as Jesus is the Son of God, that's, that's supposed to be our identity. That's supposed to be how we're supposed to be operating. And the scripture is showing us this so obvious. Amen. In one place, it's you and I. Abba, Father, in the next place, it's the spirit of his son in our hearts crying, Abba, Father, telling us that we are in total agreement, in perfect sync, amen, with Jesus Christ, amen, with the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, right? Now, let's look at this in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. You know, we read the scriptures all the time, and scripture says, as he is, so are we in this world. We are perfectly united and joined together with Christ in the spirit. And that's what those scriptures are telling us. He's crying Abba. We're crying Abba. He's crying Abba out of us. But it's one. We are one with him. God doesn't see us separate. When we cry out Abba Father, all he knows is that's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And I'm going to give him the desires of his heart. Praise the Lord. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. They, they, ha, they, they don't have any manifestation of this because it's in the unseen until you, by faith, manifest it into the seen realm. So they can't see him because they're in the flesh. Amen. Whom the world cannot see, it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him because he dwells in you and or with you and shall be in you, which he is to this day. Amen. So now let's go back to Paul. He not only said, you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. He also said, you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. You didn't receive a spirit of fear. That spirit of fear is still trying to come on you, but that isn't what you are. That's not what you're about. You are a child of God. You are a spirit being, and your spirit is crying out, Abba, to God. In other words, your spirit knows who you are and what you are, and it's crying out to its father, to who fathered it. Amen. We are born again of the water and the spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Now, as children of God, each of us is being transformed into an exceeding abundant above all that we can ask or think. That's what we're being transformed into as we yield to the Spirit. Amen? We are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ through faith in His Word. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about how we live out our lives. How we walk in divine healing. So much so that we can pray for the sick. We can heal the sick. I mean, if we're sitting around, you know, freaking out and talking about all the negative stuff, what, who, the, who wants that? They've already got it 24-7. What they're looking for is somebody to say, hey, whoa, let's tap the brakes, man. This thing ain't over. Come on, we've got God on our side. He's brought this country through a lot of things over the years, even when this country was not perfect, because it's never been perfect. But if we make God the focus, God will be the focus. He will be the means by which we escape or uh, travel through whatever situation or circumstance the enemy or just life natural tries to put on us. Amen? So the third revelation of truth then is, we've got the first revelation is we are not in the flesh, we are in the spirit. The second revelation is our spirit is totally in sync with God because we both cry out, Abba, Father, as though we were just one. Amen. And the third revelation of truth we need to receive is that God will give you the desires of your heart. Praise the Lord. Let's look quickly at Psalms chapter 37 and verse 4. It's where David pens this. He'll give us the desires of our heart. I will bless the Lord all things. Praise the Lord. 37 and 4. Hallelujah. Jesus. Delight thyself also in the Lord. In other words, make him the focus. Focus on him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Praise the Lord. Now let me quick let me just quickly take you down another little path here, real quick. But this is what the Spirit show, spoke to me earlier in the week. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. And I could go to other scriptures in, in Isaiah 48. It talks about people under pressure and the struggles and everything else. But when they turn to God, they say what God says, they get delivered. Amen. So, but we're going here to Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. Ezekiel 11, 18 through 20. And they shall come thither. And they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from things. He's talking about us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And again, this is prophetic. So, and I'll give them one heart. And I'll put a new spirit within you. And I'll take the stony heart out of their flesh. And we'll give them a heart of flesh. Praise the Lord. A heart of flesh. That they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. That's just another way of saying they'll walk in the Word. They'll walk by faith. Amen. They'll walk in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Bring me that, that heart. Amen. Uh, the natural heart. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. Amen. That you can then overcome by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. It says the heart of flesh. In other words, come before God with open hearts showing, hey, yeah, we're, we're concerned. You know, we're, we're, we don't know all the answers, right? And then change your mind or repent from your focus being on the negative or the natural. You know, just say, hey, whoa, just like I did with the back thing. You just got to repent. Hey, the devil's a liar. I'm sorry, Lord, I should have been listening to you all the time. Not because God wants an apology, but to get our minds back on the right track. Amen. So change your mind or repent of that physical, natural way of thinking that I'm just flesh and blood like everybody else and blah, blah, blah. All right. Now, look, at, let's go back to uh, Psalms 37. Only we'll read the entire uh, in context here. Uh, Psalms 37 verses 3 through 6. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the word. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the word of God and wait patiently and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
He knows our heart. Without us saying anything, He knows what our desires are. He knows what we have need of. Amen. He's asking for us to trust Him, to rest in Him, and not be dominated by the circumstances that are going on around you. Keep the focus on Him, and He'll give you the desire of your heart. Praise the Lord. Renew your mind with the revelation of God's Word. You're not in the flesh. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you are in the Spirit. You've been adopted as a son of God. Amen. Heart, your heart, amen, and God's heart, they're one. They're identical. That's why he says, ask me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart, because the desires of your heart are the same desires God has, that you be whole, that you be healthy, that you be blessed financially, that you are blessed coming in and blessed going out. That's the heart of God. He's just saying, agree with me, and I'll give you those desires, because they're already what I want for you to be healed, to walk in healing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have suffered those stripes. Otherwise, he wouldn't shed his blood for us to be righteous. If we believe that we're righteous, what he did was beneficial. But if we're focusing on our flesh and our humanity, what he did was of no good. It, it, it was of no consequence. You make the, the grace of God of no effect. Doesn't mean he didn't do it. It doesn't mean it's still not yours. You're just saying it, it just ha it has no effectiveness in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you've been adopted as a son. God's heart and your heart are one, and your desires agree with the word of God, and you get the desires of your heart. Somebody say amen. Thank you. I got an amen. Praise the Lord. Let me close with this. We are spirit beings, sons of God, with an inheritance. All the promises of God are our inheritance. Amen. The truth is, God has made it possible for each of us to choose the harvest that we reap based on the seed that we sow. Amen. That's speaking in agreement with God's word. Praise the Lord. When we fill our hearts, when we fill our minds with life-giving substance, which is the word of God, the seed we plant is a good seed. And it has to produce. Amen. Last scripture here is 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We'll go back to where we began. Verses 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the spirit of the Lord. What is he talking about? We don't know what Jesus looked like. I mean, we have pictures, but who knows? But we know what Jesus was. Mm -hmm. A manifestation of the Spirit of God. We are spirits. Amen? And with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we're changed into what? Into operating by the Spirit. Into that becoming our identity. Not that we get a physical facelift or some kind of body change. No, we, we operate by the Spirit as He is a Spirit. And we begin to see that we can operate the way Jesus operates. How did Jesus do it? By faith in the fact that He was the Son of God. Right? That's what He's telling us we have to do in order to be successful as children of God and to have influence on the people that are around us. Instead of us freaking out with them, we should be a, a calming source. We should be a, a place where, where we can say, hey, look, I, I get it. It's, it's a mess, but it's okay. God has already seen this coming. He's already made a way. Amen? We just have to keep that focus. Just, just say what Romans 10.10 10 says. With the mouth, confession is made. Amen? Unto salvation. What do you need saved from? Financial problems, physical problems, whatever it might, relational problems. With the mouth, confession is made. Amen. Unto salvation. It brings your salvation for whatever the situation is you need to be saved from. Praise the Lord. So the word we speak not only influences our reality, but it'll influence the reality of people around us. Amen. So here's, uh, let me just say, talk like you are somebody. I mean, years ago, I remember I had a, a church in Ankeny and we had a tent meeting. This is, you know, 35 years ago. And the, one of the, my friends who was a pastor as well, him and his wife were kind of having a little disagreement off to the side of the tent. And I was privy to it because I was standing right there and I was hearing it all. He, I, I would have thought he would have been embarrassed, you know, or kind of angry. He wasn't. He just said to his wife, talk to me like I am somebody. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to tell you what she said, but my point is this. Talk like you're somebody. Talk like you're somebody. 
Amen. Because you have authority. You are somebody. You are a spirit just like God. You are connected with God. So act like it. Talk like it. Amen. Don't be whimpering and whining and freaking out. Talk like God. Speak to those things that you don't want the way God does. He didn't say, oh my God, look how dark it is. No, he said light. I'm not talking about how sick everything is. I'm talking about health and wholeness. Amen. That's what we need to be focusing on in the future. Amen. I, I pray that all of you will. Let's, let's just get our heads in, uh, together and recognize we are something far more than we have acknowledged. And until we acknowledge this and begin to walk in this, we're, we're not helping ourselves and we certainly aren't helping anybody else. Put a watch on your tongue. Be careful what you say. If you can't say what God says, don't talk. Be, be quiet. Wait. Amen. Slow to speak. Quick to hear. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being a part of the service this morning. Amen. We're continuing to pray for you. We we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Feel free to interact with us uh, via the internet or uh, snail mail, however you want to do it. Uh, we'd be glad to hear from you and uh, know that all things are well with you. God bless you all in Jesus' name.